Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, the lecture number okay lecture welcome to lecture number 14 so already we have uh, looked into uh, how the theta is determined so due course of time we have determined this as a uh, e sin theta equal to a cos alpha and uh, e cos theta equal to a sin alpha minus 1, where a we have written as r 0 v 0 a square sin alpha divided by mu. So, if we square and add them, this is by squaring and adding 1 and 2 and adding. So, this implies e square equal to a square minus 2 a sin alpha plus 1 and a from this place we have r 0 square this becomes v 0 to the power 4 sin square alpha divided by mu square minus 2 r 0 v 0 square sin square alpha divided by mu plus 1. Okay. So, this is another expression for eccentricity. Already we have worked out eccentricity in various ways, but suppose that your r 0 and v 0 it is a given. So, alpha can be determined, if alpha can be determined and r 0 v 0 is given. So, therefore, E can also be computed in this way and mu is of course, this is known. So, you can see uh, as I told you that in the space flight mechanics the same problem can be solved in multiple ways. So, this is one of the way we can work out the problem. Okay. So, till now we have worked a, e and theta. Now, we are going to work out the other parameters. So, for working out other parameters we need to uh, we can do it by the vector method also and the scalar method also. So, if, uh, I will prefer first to work with uh, the vector method and then maybe if, uh, we can take up the uh, scalar case. Okay, one more thing I would like to write here this tan alpha this can be written as 1 by E cos theta divided by E sin theta. So, this is obtained by dividing sin alpha divided by cos alpha. So, sin alpha and cos alpha we have to fetch from our earlier workout. Here this is v 0 sin alpha equal to r theta dot and this is r dot r theta dot divided by r dot r theta dot divided by r dot. Okay, here v 0 and v 0 is there. So, this cancels out and we are left with tan alpha equal to r theta dot divided by r dot. 
and r dot theta dot all these things we are aware of. So, r times r divided by r dot and theta dot is h by r square because r square theta dot this equal to h. So, theta dot is h by r square. So, replace it here. So, this becomes h by r times r dot. And now, we can insert the value for uh, this uh, r and r dot. So, r and r dot we have derived earlier. So, we need to go and look into go back and look into that equation. r dot we have derived in terms of see here in this place r dot is we can rearrange this equation and write it. So, r dot we can write as h times e sin theta divided by l h e sin theta divided by l. h e sin theta h e sin theta divided by l. So, this becomes h l h h will cancel out and uh, we get here l divided by r e sin theta and what is the quantity r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta. So, l by r will be 1 plus e cos theta. Okay. So, here we can write it as L by R becomes 1 plus e cos theta and divided by e sin theta. So, your tan alpha this is a quantity 1 plus e cos theta and divided by e sin theta. Again, so one important part I would like to remind you that uh, this is the r vector and uh, v vector is somewhere here. This is the local normal. This angle we have written as alpha. So, what is the limit in which this alpha varies? So, let us take the case of an elliptical orbit. Here we can see that if this is the v vector uh, r vector, so v vector is here in this direction. So, angle is 90 degree. On this side, this is your r vector. Okay, so, v vector is here perpendicular. Okay, it will be tangential. So, these two extreme points, it is a 90 degree. As you can uh, um, put here so like r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta. So, once you put theta equal to 0 and this point theta equal to 0. So, you get r equal to 1 plus e. So, this is r perigee and r opposite will be l by once you put theta equal to 180 degree. So, this will be corresponding to theta equal to 180 degree. So, here also this is 90 degree, but what in other places? say here in this place or either here in this place, what will be the angle between V and R. So, how do we find that? So, the, this is the concern angle alpha. So, obviously, if we take the dot product between V and R okay, and V is your uh, R dot times E R cap plus r times theta dot times e theta cap r times e r cap and in taking the dot product this r dot r this only this part will exist and this part will vanish because they are perpendicular to each other this we are taking as dot product. So, v times r cos alpha 
is this quantity. This quantity is positive, this quantity is positive. So, depending on the and r is always positive. So, depending on the sign of r dot your cos alpha is going to be determined. And alpha will vary if you look here now look on this side. So, this is your r vector and v vector is somewhere here. So, this is your alpha. So, alpha varies between 0 and 180 degree. So, where it is a line. So, from uh, this expression you will be able to work out and also you can check that in this quadrant while here this is the shortest distance and thereafter r is increasing. So, here your r is increasing on this side and till here this is the maximum value is achieved means r dot is positive on this side and r dot is negative on this side. Thereafter the r starts decreasing and it approaches the minimum value here in this place. So, r dot is negative on this side, r dot is positive on this side. On this side this is pos positive, on, on this side r dot is negative. So, you can fix up what is the value of alpha and uh, there are so many things uh, how to fix the theta in which quadrant it is a line. So, we will use this technique to resolve all those things. Okay, so, if, uh, now we go for working out the other parameters. So, we resort here to the vector method and again we will return back to the uh, scalar method because the vector method it gives you a lot of information and it is interesting also. So, this is x, y and z. this is the nodal line this is the orbit and below it is shown the as the dotted line the footprint of the orbit on the x y plane so this is the footprint slash projection of the orbit on the x y plane which is the inertial plane x y plane this is the inertial plane this point is o we have written as n and n prime ok. Perpendicular to the orbit we are writing as this is h vector this angle we have written as i and this inclination here also we have shown it by i and somewhere the argument of perigee and other things we have taken up. So, I will show that also say this point is where the point p is located and somewhere here in this place the satellite is located. So, this angle we have shown to be a small omega and from here to here this angle we have shown to be theta this is the true anomaly. So, in this direction the unit vector we are going to write as E cap n in this direction we will write unit vector as E cap h and in the z direction already we have use the notation e cap 3 in this direction e cap 1 and along the y direction e 2 cap. Okay. So, what we see that e 3 cap cross h or E h cap ok. This is a vector this is the cross product this E 3 cap if you use the right hand rule ok and you can see that from this direction to this direction once it goes. So, this vector will be directed along this direction. So, this will be nothing but divided by 
e 3 cap cross h magnitude this will be written as e n cap because this vector is e 3 vector is normal to e n vector because this is e 3 e n vector it lies in the x y plane and therefore, e 3 is normal and moreover by rotating e 3 cap you get to the direction of by rotating e 3 cap about the e n direction you get to the direction of h. Okay. Therefore, this h vector is perpendicular to the line shown by red one here or it is a we can write here h is perpendicular to o n vector or equally we can write as h is perpendicular to e n cap or equally we can write e h cap is perpendicular to e n cap this is h we do not have to uh, confuse it or we can use some other notation for this uh, then it may be better that n and h do not uh, confuse us. Okay, so what we will do that h I will represent it like this, so that it remains clear e cap h and e cap n. So, there is a difference between these two notations, so we should not have any problem. Now, this angle we have shown as the nodal angle capital omega. So, what is the unit vector E n cap? E n cap is the unit vector which we can write as E 1 cap cos capital omega E 1 cap in this direction. So, it is a cos here up to this point till this point okay. and plus E 2 cap sin capital omega. This is 90 minus capital omega. So, cos 90 minus capital omega this will be sin capital omega. So, if we are taking E 2 projection along this direction. So, this is this part here. Now, if we compare 1 and 2, okay, this is E n vector and this is also E n vector, but this is written in terms of E 3 cap and H and each cap is known to us in terms of r 0, v 0 etcetera. Okay. So, therefore, we should be able to work out the whole thing. So, I am not going to expand it because I will do the scalar part. So, therefore, I am not going to expand it, but this is one of the most elegant way of working out the problem. If we try to expand and work it out, it will be little longer. Uh, say the h uh, if we write in a shorter notation let us say that h 0 e 1 cap plus uh, h 1 e 1 cap h 2 e 2 cap plus h 3 e 3 cap this is, these are the components of h vector along the x y and z direction okay, and that you are taking cross product with e 3 cap. Okay. So, this will be equal to e 3 times e 1 is E 2. So, H 1 times E 2 cap and plus E 3 times E 2 will give us uh, minus H 1. So, this is minus H 2 times this is E 2 H 2 times E 2. So, E 3 times E 2 it is in opposite direction. So, uh, opposite to the right, uh, right hand rule. So, that is going to give us minus E 1 cap. So, this is H 2 times minus E 1 cap and E 3 cap times E 3 cap the cross product that vanishes. So, here this is what we get. Okay. So, if, uh, let me write it on the other page. I just wanted to skip it. Uh, so, what we have on the left hand side here so, equation 1 can be written as E 
ई एन इक्वल टू ई वन कॉस कैपिटल ओमेगा इक्वेशन वन एंड टू ई वन कॉस कैपिटल ओमेगा प्लस ई टू कैप साइन कैपिटल ओमेगा दिस इक्वल टू ऑन दिस साइड दिस पार्टिकुलर पार्ट डिवाइडेड बाई दिस सो दिस ऑलरेडी वी हैव रिटर्न एच वन ई टू कैप एच वन ई टू कैप माइनस एच टू ई वन कैप एंड डिवाइडेड बाई मैग्नीच्यूड ऑफ द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट दिस क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट सो दिस इज द मैग्नीच्यूड ऑफ दिस क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट दिस इज अ वेक्टर सो इट्स मैग्नीच्यूड विल बी एच वन स्क्वायर प्लस एच टू स्क्वायर अंडर रूट दिस इज द मैग्नीच्यूड सो इफ यू कंपेयर सो दिस इज कॉस कैपिटल ओमेगा देन फ्रॉम हियर इट अपियर्स एज एच वन बाई एच वन स्क्वायर प्लस एच टू स्क्वायर अंडर रूट एंड साइन कैपिटल ओमेगा दिस विल अपियर एज माइनस एच टू बाई एच वन स्क्वायर प्लस एच टू स्क्वायर अंडर रूट सो अगेन हियर इन दिस प्लेस इफ वी यूज दिस सो टैन कैपिटल ओमेगा दिस बिकम्स obviously if we divide it so h2 divided by minus h2 divided by h1 and if you remember the h2 and h1 already we have written h2 and h1 somewhere we have written it so is 2 by h1 so is 2 is z0 x dot 0 minus z0 dot x0 divided by h1 y0 z0 dot minus y dot 0 z0 with a minus sign so this is your tan capital omega but as you know in the figure earlier we have drawn this is n this is n prime this point is o and here we have written as x y and z so this line this angle we have written as nodal angle so in the x y plane this nodal angle will vary from 0 to 360 degree this varies between 0 to 360 degree so uh, alone tan alpha you if you use this equation or either this form you want to be able to work it out for the right value you need the sign of both of them what is the sign of the sin al uh, sin capital omega and cos capital omega as i told you earlier and using that then you determine in which quadrant this capital omega is located okay just based on this equation you will do the error okay so to keep care of this that utilize both these signs utilize signs of both these expressions to get the right value of capital omega okay i just intended to skip this part uh, because in a scalar one again i am going to work out this okay so if, uh, this part we have finished so till now we have determined a e then uh, theta and capital omega rest remaining are i and small omega these are the two things that we need to work out 
ok. So, again we come to this place say along this direction this is the perigee direction ok and along the perigee direction you are aware that E cap is the unit vector already we have derived E cap this equal to B divided by mu this is the unit vector here in this direction and in this direction along the R direction we have E R cap this is the unit vector. Okay. Therefore, if we take dot product of these two unit vectors then you will we will be able to get the angle theta. Similarly, this unit vector is known E n cap and this unit vector is known. So, if we take dot product of these two so the omega uh, this omega and this theta we can determine. So, now the next step we are going to utilize this fact that the unit vectors are known in this direction and we can utilize them to find out these two angles. Okay, so, the expression for and from there we have derived this E equal to 1 by mu V 0 cross H 0 minus mu R 0 by R 0. So, this is the unit vector along the perigee direction. We solve we will be solving certain problem um, based on uh, uh, the initial value of x 0 y 0 z 0 x dot uh, y dot z dot. So, getting the value of the a e etcetera. Okay. So, due course of time I will be solving uh, all these problems. Okay. So, now we have to take the dot product of this vector with uh, r 0 to get theta and with uh, n cap uh, e n cap to uh, get the angle small omega or what we call as the argument of perigee. And uh, what else i i is remaining theta we have already got one way, but here also this will be another way of doing it. So, which will do again. So, for already done and one more way is waiting and these two we have to work it out. Okay. So, th three, th three things we are going to work out here. Okay. So, E 3 cap cross H 0 this already we have written as this is nothing but E n cap this is the unit vector in the E n direction ok. And uh, thereafter we have used this E n cap as just repeating this to uh, revise it E 2 cap. So, from here already we have worked out capital omega. Now, next we have to go and work out the other parts which are remaining. Okay, so, for, for finding out this i, if I take dot product of h and e 3, so what it will give us? So, taking dot product of h 0 or h vector and e 3 cap. So, we write here e 3 cap dot h this equal to magnitude of e 3 vector which is 1 and this magnitude this will be h 1 h and angle between them which is cos i. So, from there this implies cos i equal to E 3 cap h divided by 
h and therefore cos i this equal to e 3 cap dot here h 1 e 1 cap plus h 2 e 2 cap and h 3 e 3 cap divided by h and of course, you know that these two will vanish only the leaving the last one. So, this becomes s 3 divided by h. So, cos i is s 3 divided by h. Now, s 3 uh, already uh, we have written it and just now I wrote it somewhere. Hmm. So, s 3 is S3 is uh, x0 z0 dot minus x0 dot z0 and divided by h. So, if we use this here and discussing some more thing, this angle i as you see from this place, this is the x y plane suppose and in this your orbit is right now lying like this. I will show it by some other color and then it is a moving out. So, once it is a moving out this is the angle here you are looking at the side view, this is the side view, side view of the orbit and this is x y plane. So, as it moves out so I will vary between 0 and 180 degree. So, this is going from 0 to 180 degree. So, if I have earth here and earth is rotating on its axis in this direction, it rotates from west to east okay, and this is the north direction here and this is the south here. Okay. If your orbit orientation is like this and satellite is going here in this direction and of course, you see here that the earth is rotating this way. So, both are moving in the same direction. The, their, ori, uh, their nature of rotation is the same or what we call it they have the they have the same sense of rotation and this we call as the prograde orbit. Contrary to this if earth is rotating like this. Okay. So, this is the sense of rotation of the earth, but your orbit is something like this. So, you can see that here in this case here if I take this as the x y plane. So, this is the inclination angle i okay. here in this case the inclination angle is acute while here in this case inclination angle will become obtuse. Okay. So, this is called retrograde orbit. And why? Because this has opposite sense of rotation with respect to earth. If the orbit is exactly 90 degree that means, it is going up and down like this. So, this is called the polar orbit.
if orbit is little bit more inclined around say for the 600 kilometers orbit you are around the 97th degree of inclination i equal to this kind of orbit we call as the sun synchronous orbit because this orbit it keeps rotating and always faces the sun okay that we will come later on while we do the general perturbation method variation of parameter so at that time we will take care of that so here what my emphasis is why i am discussing this because this i is varying between 0 and 180 degree if i equal to 0 this is lying in the x y plane if you are measuring angle with respect to this i this is not with respect to the equator for that you have to give correction for that okay then you call the equatorial orbit okay and similarly the polar orbit also you have to get give, give correction because the uh, the plane of rotation of the um, uh, this equatorial plane and uh, uh, the x y plane they are not exactly the same they differ so using this expression you will be able to resolve get the right value of i you do not need any other support to get the correct value of i so here i lies between 0 degree to 180 degree okay next so right now what we have worked out a e i capital omega and theta we have done in one way one more way we will do small omega is remaining so these two are remaining so working out through the vector method we have to do these two things and we approach it in the same way so then again we look back here in this figure and then if we have to locate this evaluate this omega so we have to take dot product of en cap and this e cap if we do this omega will be available to us so taking dot product of e n uh, cap and uh, e cap so this is the unit vector along eccentricity vector vector or peri apsis or perigee and this is along the positive nodal side or nodal line that is along on direction so we have en cap dot e cap this will be equal to cos omega because both the en cap and e cap they are unit of unit magnitude so this is cos omega so cos omega small omega this equal to en cap times e cap and now we need to insert this en cap so en cap again we have to fetch from the earlier one this is cos omega sin omega cos capital omega e1 cap plus sin capital omega e2 cap and dot e cap e cap is the vector already we have written here b y e cap is this vector so 
So, obviously, you can see that this is little more complicated and if we try to expand it, it will take a lot more time and it will get complicated also. So, rather than doing that, if we just write it in this format like uh, this is b divided by mu and b will have components sin capital omega e 2 cap. So, b 1 e 1 cap b 2 e 2 cap. So, this will get reduced to and there is the dot product here and this is b 1 cos capital omega 1 by mu plus b 2 sin capital omega. So, this is cos capital omega. But then you need to work out this b 1 and uh, b 1 and b 2 here which is required and that we have to get from this expression. So, this is nothing but b by mu. So, right hand side we have to expand and after expanding we have to combine all the terms together of the similar terms like which corresponding to e 1, e 2 and e 3 okay. and thereafter from there we will have the b 1 and b 2 and utilize it to solve this problem. So, this we are not going to do uh, otherwise it will stretch for another 10 15 minutes. Okay. So, th this suffices for the time being. Okay, we can take it as uh, uh, some uh, tutorial problem as an exercise and that will be much better. Okay, omega here also it lies between 0 and 360 degree. So, how to know that in which quadrant it is a line? both omega and theta they have the same problem and capital omega also. So, we have to work out in, in which uh, quadrant it is uh, going to lie. So, these are the unit vectors already we have written. Okay. Now, to resolve that in which quadrant this omega of, uh, is going to lie, as you can see this is cos omega and cos omega obviously whatever the value is there if it comes positive or negative. So, you have four quadrants the cos is positive here in this side, positive here on this side, negative here, negative here. So, where it is going to lie? So, is somewhere you have to resolve it just by getting this value you would not be able to tell the correct value of omega. So, to resolve this we need to consider few things here like what we can see here that uh, if E cap times E 3 cap if this is greater than 0 that means your uh, this part of the orbit it is a line above the x y plane this is x and y plane. So, it is a line from here to up to here okay, going from this place to this place. So, you can see that in this case this quantity is going to be greater than 0 because this angle the angle between this and this it will be always less than 90 degree. If you look from the side, so this is vertical line and this is the orbit. Okay. 
and here this is the orbit normal. So, this is i, this is 90 minus i. So, this angle is always going to be less than 90 degree. The angle between if suppose omega is near about 0, so that means it will be lying along this line. So, in that case I will pay this uh, omega angle will be around omega is nearly equal to 0. So, the angle between E 3 cap and uh, the E cap vector this angle between these two this will be around 90 degree. So, if we write this as O, so this is the angle. So, this is the way this is 90 degree here. So, this is not going to exceed that value. So, if your this perigee line is lying above the x y plane, so this is going to be satisfied and you know in that case that if cos omega is positive okay, and this is positive then it is a bound to be in the first quadrant means it is a less than between 0 and 90 degree. If this is coming out to be negative cos omega is negative, but this quantity is positive. So, it is we are sure that it is a line between 90 and 180 degree. So, this is the case when cos omega is greater than 0 and E cap dot E 3 cap is greater than 0 and this will be the case when cos capital omega this is less than 0 E cap and uh, um, E cap and dot E 3 cap this is greater than 0. So, this is the situation the same way we can get the information while this is less than 0. So, what is the cos omega value? Okay. So, cos omega value combine it with this one and you will be able to determine whether it is a line in the third quadrant or either the fourth quadrant means it is a going below like this going below the x y plane. So, we will be able to sort out this problem. Okay, so, here in this case if this is the situation proper correction needs to be needs to be given. While here in this case if this is the case cos omega will give right value of omega. So, on the next page I will write it. If E 3 cap dot E cap is greater than 0, then cos omega produces the right value of omega that is this will be lying between 0 and 180 degree. But if E 3 cap dot E 3 if this is less than 0 then cos omega alone will not give right value of omega and hence proper correction must be given as explained in the on the previous page. On the last we have left with the theta angle.
So, similarly for finding theta, we have E cap dot R cap. E cap dot R cap. So, where we have drawn the figure. here in this place. So, this is your E cap and E r cap is here. So, if we take dot product of these two, so this angle will be known to us. So, we do this now. So, E dot E cap dot product with r. So, this will be E cap magnitude times r, r cap instead of writing r cap we can write here r times cos theta. So, this is r cos theta And therefore, cos theta this equal to E cap dot R divided by R. And E cap we know that we are writing in terms of B E 1 cap, B 2 E 2 cap, B 3 E 3 cap dot R 1 E 1 cap, R 2 E 2 cap plus R 3 E 3 cap divided by R. So, this will result in B 1 R 1 plus B 2 R 2 and divided by mu of course, here plus B 3 R 3 divided by this divided by mu R. I should write here somewhere in different place. Let me rub it out. This is divided by mu times r. So, we will write here divided by mu r and this equal to 1 by mu r times B 1 R 1 plus B 2 R 2 plus B 3 and R 1 R 2 R 3 what these are? These are nothing but x y z. So, the quantities these quantities are this is x 0, this is y 0 and this is z 0 the components of the r vector along the x y and z direction. So, again theta this is the angle this is the true anomaly So, theta is the true anomaly we are measuring from the periapsis this is the point p and from here we are measuring angle theta this satellite is here and this is angle theta ok. So, along this direction we have taken as the E vector E cap and along this direction we have E r cap which we are writing in terms of r. So, this is the r vector. So, this theta angle this again it varies from theta varies from 0 to 360 degree. So, once you are getting it using the cos theta, so you need to be sure in which quadrant it is a line cos theta this equal to whatever we have got there uh, B 1 
f 0 plus b 2 y 0 plus b 3 z 0 divided by mu times r. This is what we are getting here. So, we need to resolve this part also where this theta is going to lie. So, for this what we will do? We will utilize the technique we have developed earlier. Say if, if this is here, this is your r vector in this direction, this is the v vector. So, r vector the angle between r 0 or the v 0 vector, if we take this dot product. So, this is your r times e r cap dot r dot times e r cap plus r times theta dot times e theta cap. Now, this quantity becomes equal to this. So, this part is vanishing and we are left with r times r dot. Earlier also perhaps we have discussed this. So, as you can see here in this place that in this part this quantity is going to be positive. So, r r dot is greater than 0 here in this part and r r dot is less than 0 here in this part because on this side the radius vector is increasing. So, r dot is positive on this side radius vector is decreasing continuously. So, r dot is negative, r is always positive, r is always greater than 0 and therefore, using the sign of this. So, find out what is the sign of this sin r r dot use this sign which is coming from this place of course, that means you have to use that r dot sign what is the value of the r dot if you use this and use this equation here. So, you will be able to determine where your exactly the theta is located because this will again get duplicated you will have the same value like your uh, cos 360 minus theta and cos theta both have the same value. Okay, so, how do we know that this one is the right one or this is the right one? Okay, that means, your theta is lying here in this point or here it is lying here in this point. Which one is correct? It is lying here on this side or it is lying here on this side? Either on this side or either on this side where it is lying. So, this we need to resolve. So, this can be resolved using this particular technique. So, this way we will be able to uh, resolve all these issues and uh, we are going to do the same thing little by already I have done uh, scalar method also we have I have introduced, but again I will repeat for few of them. Um, so, that later on while solving the problem it becomes little easier to deal with all these topics and of course, I will provide you the hard copy uh, so sorry the soft copy of the uh, this material uh, printed uh, soft copy, but there it will not be exactly the lecture wise would say it is a one hour lecture it is a condensed and that way you have to uh, look into that. So, you can take help of them while the course runs.